Menace to Society, Juice, Friday. These are all classic 1990 hood movies. But I'm forgetting one of the most iconic hood movies to date, Boys in the Hood. Boys in the Hood is a coming of age story of a group of friends navigating the hoods of Los Angeles. Yo, what is good guys? It is your boy OJ the Demon. Welcome back to the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new. Today, we're going to be talking about the story of Lord Avery II. You may not know his name, but you've definitely seen his face. He was a part of one of the most iconic scenes in movie history. Ricky! He's the guy who shot Ricky. Now his actual life story is pretty insane. But before we get into that, we gotta talk more about Boys in the Hood. Boys in the Hood is a very iconic black movie. The 1991 film gave the rest of the world a look inside of Los Angeles hoods. The film was directed by John Singleton and it starred many black celebrities, one being Ice Cube. But John Singleton specifically wanted to use actors from the LA area. He wanted to give the film a genuine vibe. Lloyd Avery was one of the people that he chose even though he never acted before, this was his first time acting. Lord Avery II was born June 21st, 1969 in Los Angeles, California, of course. He had a great childhood. He grew up with both parents along with his three siblings. He grew up in a really nice area, Baldwin Hills. Some even call it the Black Beverly Hills because of how nice it is. Lloyd's parents made sure that they lived a good life. They had a swimming pool in the backyard. They had everything that they wanted, definitely had everything that they needed they were downright spoiled now keep this in mind because it's important to the story they went to the best schools and they were church goers they were living the american dream he attended beverly hills high school he was said to be really good at baseball and water polo after high school he went to a technical trade college but he dropped out after dropping out he worked a couple small jobs but he really had a passion for entertainment but his dad didn't like that his dad wanted him to focus on a real career and keep the entertainment business as a hobby that's obviously not what he wanted in a According to his mom that made him and his dad bump heads a lot. He landed a acting role in Boys in the Hood and he would play the blood gang member that was known for toting a double barrel shotgun. Now obviously his life and the life of the character that he played was very different. Boys in the Hood was a box office success and it was nominated for multiple Oscars. It made John the youngest black film director to be nominated and it took off many of the actors careers. Lord Avery became somewhat of a celebrity even though he was a side character he played a part in a really significant scene of the movie people were able to recognize him john singleton really liked it lloyd he would even go to his house and have dinner with his family singleton was working on another movie called poetic justice starring tupac and janet jackson so naturally he landed lloyd and his brother a role in that movie as well as we can see singleton has a lot of love for lloyd but that would all soon come to an end because at the movie's premiere john and lloyd were sitting next to each other at the end of the movie lloyd got up and yelled man that shit was wild which is pretty crazy and we can see it he's starting to fly off the rail this obviously upset singleton and ended their friendship shortly afterwards in the summer of 1993 lloyd's and i quote increasingly bizarre behavior began to worry his friends and family members he began to act angry and irrational john singleton said that he became his role in the movie lloyd started rapping under the name la deuce and he was writing the movie about the streets but the problem was he never grew up in the streets he needed inspiration so he moved to the ball one village which is a la hood home of the black pea stone bloods his friend qd3 shared a apartment with him he recalls lloyd being in his mid-20s hanging out with teenage gang members his acting career began to slip he'd get a couple calls for some small roles but he wasn't showing up to auditions and if he did he wouldn't know his lines people in the industry began to wonder about him it seems as though his biggest role he wanted to play for life he left a high middle class area to live in the slums he even got a face tat the word jungle right above his eyebrow which was the name of the hood that he moved into in 1999 lloyd was a part of a shootout on hillcrest avenue in the jungles in april 1999 lloyd got in an argument by a shopping center near the jungles at around 11 30 that night lloyd threw a concrete water meter through the window and a shootout ensued he was spiraling out of control and his family was worried about him after a couple interventions with his family he decided that he was going to get his act together he started distancing himself from the gang he was in the process of getting his 
his face tattoo removed, Lloyd started to pursue his acting career once again, and he landed a role in the 2000 film Lockdown. Lloyd was unhappy with his role because he played a drug addicted snitch. The role wasn't hood enough for him, but he needed the money, so he would often throw fits on the set, and according to his co-stars, this made it a pain to work with him. In 2001, Lloyd landed another role in the movie Shot. He completely nailed it. The director of the film said that he was a great talent, but he went on to say that Lloyd's onset antics were disappointing. He smoked weed, got in gang fights, and even stole a car, which is seriously insane. This wasn't the Lloyd that his parents raised at all. After this movie, Lloyd would get arrested. It seemed as though his past was finally catching up to him because apparently five months earlier, he murdered two people. On July 1st, Lloyd was outside a shopping center near the jungles. At around 4 p.m., he got in an argument with a woman by the name of Manette Lewis. Lloyd put out a gun and shot her five times. He then shot a man by the name of Pretzi Branch in his arm and in his stomach. Lewis died shortly after and Branch succumbed to his injuries weeks after. On July 23rd, get this, a couple days before his arrest, Lloyd and his brother was in his grandmother's garage. His brother said that Lloyd was saying things such as, I had a good life, you know? His brother said that Lloyd seemed as though he wanted to confess something that night, but he stopped him because he was too scared to hear what he was gonna say. He was arrested and charged with two counts of murder. During the trial, there was a couple issues with the prosecutor's case. The three eyewitnesses that named Lloyd the shooter all had credibility issues. There was no murder weapon recovered. The bullet casings that linked him to the murder were accidentally destroyed by ballistic examiners. So they really didn't even have much evidence on him. So he should get away with it, right? However, he was still found guilty with the murders and was sentenced to life in prison. His family was split. Some of them thought that he did it. Some of them actually believed that he was innocent. They recalled an incident of him coming to the house yelling that he kills people. And when he was asked to leave, he replied, I don't give a F. Jungles. <laughs> he was really repping his hood. Lloyd was sent to Pelican Bay State Prison, which is one of the most dangerous prisons in America. He said that he wanted to go there because it's one of the most toughest places. His plans were to get a retrial and beat his case, then return to the streets as a convicted murderer and begin his rap career. Now that sounds like a kick-ass rapper happy ending, but unfortunately for Lloyd, life had other things in store for him. He was granted a retrial, but he was again found guilty in July 2005. After this, Lloyd became a born-again Christian. He stopped cursing and fighting, and he would often call family members to check up on them. He led prayer services in prison, and he would often try to spread the gospel. He would even try to spread the gospel to his cellmate, Kevin Robley, but there was an issue. Kevin was a Satanist, a Satan worshiper that was on year 17 on a three-time life sentence for murder. Lloyd sent a letter to Chaplain Clark saying that God made him his cellmate for a reason. He was convinced that he was going to be able to convert Robley into a Christian, but unfortunately, he was wrong. Less than a week later on September 4th of 2005, Lloyd came back to his cell after church service. Roby was praying near Pentagon that he drew on the floor. Lloyd began talking about gospel. Then they started arguing about their different ideologies, and it soon turned violent. After a brutal fight, Roby put Lloyd in a chokehold and proceeded to kill him. Lloyd was now dead in Roby's cell. That night, guards did a head check, and they did not notice that Lloyd wasn't there. The next day, they did another head check, still didn't notice. 11 head counts later, they still didn't find anything out of the ordinary. Lloyd's body wasn't discovered until September 6, 2005. All the time that Lloyd lay lifeless in Robley's cell, he used his blood to draw a pentagram and used his body for a satanic ritual. At 11.55, an officer came inside the cell and witnessed this horrific scene. Roby was handcuffed and Lloyd's body was taken to the infirmary. They performed CPR on his body, not knowing he's been dead for days and his body lay decomposing. Lloyd had a fractured sternum, which could have been from the CPR. Lloyd's eyelids were swollen shut, his nose was fractured, and there was an abrasion on his temple. The official cause of death was listed as aspiration of blood. His family paid for a private autopsy where they determined he passed from blunt force trauma. Reports show that injury to his skull was from a blow to a flat surface, such as a hammer or something similar. Roby confessed to murdering him. No charges were ever filed against him because he was already serving life. The district attorney said it was no point because he would just get better treatment. So they sent him to solitary confinement. Lloyd's brother found his movie script that he was working on and it was the reason that he moved into the hood to begin with. The script told a story of a character by the name of L.A. Deuce. It was a biography and he details his experience of being on the streets and being in jail. The script was titled Jungles. That will conclude today's video. Let me know if you guys enjoyed today's video because I'm down to do more true crime type videos like this if you guys enjoy. But it's been your boy OJ the Demon and I'm out.